is you get through this race and your hardware won't be tested again like this all season. No, but it'll also be a lot stronger from here on out, too. As we look at this race with the Miss Budweiser on the outside and the T-plus on the inside, the red boat is the Miss Budweiser. There you're inside the yellow and black T-plus. Look at the Miss Budweiser out of the cockpit to the right. You can see that huge rooster tail. And we must point out that a driver trailing a rooster tail has got to be aware of that tail because it's like seven tons of water. The boat will actually ride up on it. This time, he was far enough back to get through it. I was just going to say that Steve David was doing by far the best job we've seen today of running on the inside. You saw the boat slide out through the rooster tail of Miss Budweiser. That puts him firmly back in second place. Bernie Little watching from high atop his little stand by the Miss Budweiser pit as he watches his boat take a command over the T-plus. That boat is holding beautifully on the water. Very solid. Fishtail by the T-plus. Looked like Steve David hooked it just a little bit, Dick. Back there running in the slot behind Miss Budweiser. Here's that spectacular view once again as Steve David follows Chip Hanauer into the turn. And it looks like he's gotten right into the trail of the rooster tail because he is trying to get that smooth water and gain a little speed. He's staying right on track with Chip Hanauer's boat. Actually true, just like in water skiing. Sometimes the smoothest water is right behind the boat in front of you. Well, the boat in front in this case is hitting pretty smooth water. The Miss Budweiser, the Zodiac lap speeds. Let's take a look at both boats. 137 miles per hour for the Miss Budweiser, 120 miles per hour for the T+. Plus. And as you can see, that 120 is moving plenty fast across this water. Chip Hanauer brings Bernie Little's Miss Budweiser down the front straightaway and takes the checkered flag. And as he does, he adds another 400 points on the day. Let's look at the Fruit of the Loom. Cumulative points on this day at Firebird Lake. Miss Budweiser with 800 points. Miss T-Plus at 700. Smokin' Joe's and Pico's American Dream at 400 each. Sp Chip, virtually a brand new boat. A shakedown cruise going pretty well here. Yeah, better than I would have hoped. You know, coming to a course like this, which is so different, and then coming with a boat that's never been tried, I was pretty nervous, but I don't think I could ask for more. One more heat. One more heat. That's the one that um, puts uh, shoes on the baby and groceries on the table. So uh, I hope we can do well. And we'll be back with more racing from Firebird Lake in just a moment. Back at Firebird Lake, Dick Crippen along with Steve Montgomery and Jim Hendrick. And we are off and running in the final race of our final four. Pico's American Dream, the blue and white boat against Smokin' Joe's, the blue and yellow boat. And look at Smokin' Joe's come by as Vilwak handles heavy on the inside. As he comes out of the turn, Smokin' Joe's, Mark Tate has taken a lead, but Dave Vilwak is not giving him room. And at this point, if indeed Smokin' Joe's wanted to come to the inside, he might have a problem. He might not have the distance away from the second place boat to cut in without affecting the rooster tail. So they've got to be careful. He knows that Dave Vilwak is a real lead foot back there behind him. There you still see the blue boat in the picture. Best race we've had so far today. But the Smokin' Joes has almost established that overlap. And there you see the interval between the two boats. 1.51 seconds. That's all there is to it. Remember, these boats are going the length of a football field in about one second's time. So there's very little distance between these two boats. As we look again at the speeds of these boats, they're holding fairly steady. Well, actually, Vilwak has dropped off just a little bit. Smokin' Joe's at 135, according to our Zodiac sports watches. And Vilwak now at 107. There you see the view Mark Tate has of the grandstand going by on the right. Vilwak now has dropped back a bit. It looks to be Tate's race, but Vilwak definitely gave him a run on the inside. He sure did handle that boat, and I can tell you, Vilwak did not want the inside. He had told me before he knows where the fast course is, and it is on the outside, but he didn't have a choice. This time, it was Smokin' Joe's that got the lane choice. He took the fast one, and that's the outside. He is handling beautifully. That boat is really handling better than we've seen it in a while. Thinking already about his potential final heat matchup with his old rival, Chip Hanauer. Mark Tate taking a little time now to look at different parts of the race course, Dick. Here we see him running right on the boy line. And the reason for that is because he knows that Chip Hanauer is going to get the lane choice in the final race and probably will go to the outside. There's the checkered flag and the
the winner with another 400 points will be Smokin' Joe. So the matchup is clear at this point. The two boats with 800 points, the Miss Budweiser and the Smokin' Joes, will go head to head. Picos and T Plus will battle for third. Now we. Mark, you had some speed with you that time. Any problem putting him away? Well, you know, he, he had a little jump on me at the start, and we pulled him down into the first turn and made him hold his lane through there, and looked like he hooked a little bit, and after that point, we kind of put the race away. You know, all I can say is the Smoke and Joe boat's working really well. I got to commend my crew, though. You know, we broke a propeller here earlier in the week, and these guys worked around the clock one day and put it back together and gave me a great race boat. Steve Wilmer, you haven't lost a race all season. <laughs> yeah, well, let's hope that's true after the next one. So, uh, no, the Smoking Joe is running real good today, and uh, we're all excited about the final. Now it is the battle for third place in the unlimited hydroplanes. We're looking out the canopy of the T-plus. That boat will be on the inside, the yellow and black boat. The blue boat with the white trim is Pico's American Dream Day. Phil Watt, there's the flag, and there's the start. This is a battle, and they are even Steven going down into the first turn. Usually the boat on the outside has the advantage. Let's see if that's true. Steve David flies high up on the skid fin, manages to hold the lead through turn number one and two, and I think that's the first time today the inside boat has held the lead coming out of the turn. By, by far the best job any driver has done all day, Dick, of getting through that turn on the inside. Steve David kept his boat speed up. We've seen the guy on the inside just about have to park it to get around that turn. Right now, our leader is on the inside for the first time. And I think we're going to have to keep an eye on that boat because Dave Billwalk is putting the pressure on him, and I noticed that the T-plus keeps going up just a little bit on his sponsor. 1.1 second, the Zodiac interval time by these two boats. Wow, this is the best racing we've seen all day, but see how the boat kind of tips over onto its right as that skid fin on the left revs into the water. He's got to keep very attuned to the amount of air that's passing underneath his boat. Here's the view out the front window of Steve David's boat. Nobody in front of him in that picture, but now you see Vilwak moving up a bit on the outside as an anxious Jim Harvey, the owner of the black and yellow boat watches. He's coming through the turn again, scraping off a little bit of speed, and Vilwak may have got around him on the outside. Now the T-plus hooks a little bit. He's lost some speed there, Nick. And as the T-plus gets back up on play, now you can see the rooster tail from the Pico's American Dream, Dave Vilwak. He has taken full advantage of the slight loss of speed because of that hooking action of the T-plus. There you can see Steve Davids right back on it, trying to chip away again at the leader. He is averaging 129 miles per hour in Pico's American Dream. The interval now between first and second is 2.5 seconds. That turn, where the T-plus engine treatment hooked just a bit on the inside, cost Steve David about three seconds. And now you see him in pursuit of Dave Vilwak. And it looks like Dave Vilwak on the home stretch cut it in just a little bit to get more into the interior of the course. There's the checkered flag. Third place on the day will go to Pico's American Dream. The happy crew down in the pit area, no question about it. The time was cost by the T-plus as he hooked into that turn, and that is where the problem was. You can see as he came around the turn, watch the inside boat, yellow and black. See, he kind of fishtails it there. Then you can see the Sponson dig. Now he's almost coming across the course. He finally straightens it out. That little tiny variance in the groove was enough to cost him time. Here it is from inside the boat. Now watch the things dead ahead as the boat kind of loses its groove. You can see the water break up over the front of it. There you can see the leader taking it over in the right. Let's go down to Steve in the winner's pit area. Well, David, normally when you got to catch somebody, you try to get to the inside. Here, the outside worked okay. Yeah, it worked okay. You know, we tried to take a slug at that yellow boat over there, and we had to take a slug at this yellow boat here from the uh, outside, and it worked out for us, you know. Like I say again, Wisney family, progressive tool. They got us here, and they got us a really competitive boat, and I think we put on a good show in this a little bit different format than what we see in other programs, but we're having a great time. The crew's doing a great job, and we just couldn't be happier about the outcome, even though we've, we've just got third place we'd like to one but as it goes down you know for our first race i think we had a great great outing for everybody here dave phil walk and pico's american dream gets third place on the day first place that will be decided next the two fastest qualifiers of the day miss budweiser and smoke and joe's next Phoenix, Arizona, Dick Griffin, along with Steve Montgomery and Jim Hendrick as we look at the Miss Budweiser, the fastest qualifier on the weekend. Going out onto the course, we want to talk to the owners of the two final boats. Let's talk first with Bernie Little. 
hasn't worked out too bad not having the crew chief here. Oh, well, everything that we've done here today uh, goes back to Ronnie Brown. Ronnie uh, engineered this boat, and believe me, he's not here physically, but he certainly is here, and he's on that phone every minute of the day. He's telling us what to do, and we're doing it. Starting your 33rd year in Unlimiteds, and you're in another final heat. Yeah, we sure are, and uh, thanks to Ronnie and the, this Budweiser crew that uh, they built us a great boat. Chip is mighty happy with it, so uh, we hope we'll win today, but we may and we may not, but we'll be trying. Here's the boat that is competition for him, the Smokin' Joes. Mark Tate is aboard that boat. The man who has been watching it from the pit area all day long with the R.J. Reynolds folks is none other than Steve Woolmer. Steve, the good news is you're in the final heat, but you're on the inside. Well, the inside's been a little rough today. I think if we can get a little jump on the start with the Smokin' Joes and uh, push Budweiser a little bit into that first corner and get through there first, I think we've got a good shot at it. Uh, you know, it's down to the two best boats going for it here, and uh, I think the Smokin' Joe will be right there. We're in the warm-up lap now for the finals as you look down on Firebird Lake and the Firebird Complex. Smokin' Joe's on the inside. Miss Budweiser on the outside. Look at that shot. Great shot as Mark Tate comes up. Look how close he is to Chip Hathauer and the Miss Budweiser on the outside. I think they were probably just uh, tapping sponsors to wish each other well or something along that line. They didn't literally touch, but I know both of these drivers have tremendous respect for each other. Now we're going to see if these two boats will match out in this literal drag race for the finals here at Firebird Lake. When we come down, there's the green flag. Miss Budweiser trying to establish dominance right off the bat. You can see Smokin' Joe's just on the inside of that rooster tail. Now look at the difference in the ride of the boat as he heads into the turn, riding on the skid fin, back out onto the straightaway again, and the Miss Budweiser is leading. Tremendous shot. Showed you Mark Tate doing a great job of holding his boat on the inside line, but the outside is still the fast way around, and it's going to be hard, Nick, for him to catch Chip Hanauer. He's got it hooked up, and the Miss Budweiser has been, let's admit it, the best boat here this weekend. Oh, boy, did the Smoking Joe ever take a couple of porpoise jumps there, and he had to go through the rooster tail of what was left of it, and it looked like he may have lost a lot of power as he came out of that turn. No problem at all. An absolutely perfect view of how a hydroplane should ride as we look at the Miss Budweiser. Chip Hanauer just doing a magnificent job. And you see the view out the front window of the Smoking Joe's. Mark Tate can see Chip Hanauer way off to his left, but he's almost a half a lap ahead now. He can only hope that he can chip away at that speed the best he can do because the interval is getting wider as Chip Hanauer does a great job taking full advantage. The interval now at eight seconds between first and second place according to our Zodiac sports watches. There you see second place, the Smokin' Joes. Again, Mark Tate doing a very good job of driving. He lost a little bit. You can't make any sort of an error out here. The boat slipped out on him a little bit and it cost him time. We hear a little more compressor stalling now out of the Smokin' Joes as Mark Tate came by the grandstand. Apparently, Dick, he loaded up that engine just a bit. It's not healthy. He might not have been able to catch Chip Hanauer anyway. It has been a Budweiser day here in Phoenix. Still leading the race and still doing a great job giving us some beautiful shots with our cameras around the course, the Miss Budweiser. We're coming up on the finish of the race. Now, let's talk about average speed. Miss Budweiser ended about 136 miles per hour. The average speed for the Smokin' Joes at 127. Still very, very respectable, but not fast enough to catch the Miss Budweiser. And now let's take a look as the Miss Budweiser comes past the grandstand for the last time. Miss Budweiser, the checkered flag. Chip Hanauer has done it. A brand new boat. Second place will go to the Smokin' Joes. Chip Hanauer, I'm sure, is making Ronnie Brown in that hospital bed feel awfully good at this hour as he hears that the Miss Budweiser will win the first competition of the new year on the unlimited hydroplane schedule. Chip Hanauer has slowed. I haven't seen this before. He has slowed down right in front of the grandstand. He turned on his strobe light opened the cockpit <laughs> and he is waving at the fans as he heads back to the pit area. Let's take a look at the replay of what happened to Smokin' Joe's. You see Mark Tate on the inside is the skid fin. Cannot find water to hang on to. He skips out into the rooster tail of Miss Budweiser. 
Fortunately, he got the aftertail, if you will, so it wasn't real heavy water. The boats have been known to ride up on those rooster tails, but in this case, he crossed over the waves, and he did take the spray across the windshield and such, but it was just enough to take off the edge on the speed. Well, let's go down to the winner's dock and join the celebration. Are we going to see something new here with the uh, victory lap? I like well, it. Well, <laughs> it's fun. It's close enough that it was nice to be able to stop and actually look at the fans in the eye. I can, you know, I could actually recognize people. <laughs> can we race on this lake, Chip? Um, I think this is the most fantastic hydroplane course in the history of the world, right? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Bernie, this is one for the engineers. Oh, it truly is. And uh, I, not, never in my 32-year history do I remember a new boat coming out and taking a first victory. And uh, we owe this to Ronnie Brown and my crew. They did an outstanding job. They give Chip a boat that'll win, and Chip gives them a victory. I'm, I'm real optimistic for the season. You know, anytime you start with a new boat, there's a huge question mark, and uh, I think this is going to be a great boat, um, not just for this unique course, but for the whole season. And thanks, Ronnie. I'm sorry you weren't here, and this is your victory. This is your boat. This is your team, and uh, it's a credit to your management ability that, that we could do this. Thanks, bud. Lots That's of celebrating it. still to go for the Miss Budweiser yeah. crew with the championship today. Second place went off to Mark Tate in the Smoking Joes. He's standing by with Jim Hendrick. Mark, what happened out there the last heat? You sound like a little burble in the engine. Well, we were compression song because we were deaccelerating so hard, but, uh, you know, that really wasn't the problem. I feel that the problem was the start, and I want to meet with the referees. The first time around, I was running exactly 120 mile an hour. I got the computer sheets here, and I'm going to show them. And I think it's very poor that they aborted that start. Well, I thought that the outside boat was supposed to be the pace boat. He wasn't up on the line with you. Doesn't matter. He's supposed to run 120. I'm on the inside. It's a hazardous. It's very tight out there. At one point, I was going 58 mile an hour in a corner. This computer sheet will show it. I want to meet with the referees and show them that. It's the responsibility of that outside guy to run 120. And if I'm running 120 and he can't stay up, there is a, a rule in the rule book that if the pace is at 120 and a guy can't stay up to the pace, they'll start without him. It's his responsibility to get to that boat speed. Now, you're defending champion of the next race at Gold Cup time back in your hometown, Detroit. I'm sure you're looking forward to that. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, we feel that the, the boat was running extremely well here. We're, we're, we're very pleased with where we at so far this year. Yeah, we got a second place. We're 100 points out for the championship, and, and uh, the Gold Cup's a big race. And I seem to have our whole team, the Smoker Joe team, uh, has great success in Detroit, and we're looking forward to getting home.